I'm in like a different mindset, which is good and bad. Mm-hmm. I want to do things, but I also want to put every single dollar I can into the business. <laughs> and I'm also like, I want to own a house because I want my kids to grow up in a house. So I was like, I have these three different things. Also want to travel, right? Because we, we haven't traveled as a family. Extremely difficult. Extremely difficult, especially with this inflation going on. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Elevate. My name is Jessica. My name is Darwin. And today we're going to be talking about millennials' struggles. The real struggle. Do you feel like you're struggling? I feel like us millennials have been struggling. Why? Especially now where most of us are in our late 20s, if not early 30s. Um, I feel like we grew up with this mindset, you know, of like going to school and everyone of our teachers were like, the thing to do is like graduate high school and go to college and get yourself a good job. And it was kind of glamorized. Like if you went to college, I, I don't know about anybody else. You guys correct me if I'm wrong, if you maybe didn't have this experience. But for me, when I graduated high school and was on my way to college, it was like, the conversations around that was like, if you do this, you're going to be set. Mm -hmm. And so it was, I feel like it was completely glamorized and almost made it feel like, like you can't fail if you do the right thing. And I feel like that's so wrong now that I'm an adult and I. The thing is that a lot of people are realizing that, a lot of people spent a lot of money going to school mm-hmm. and, you know, following what, let's say, their parents taught them or wanted the, the best for them because truly that's what the, their parents wanted sure. at the time. And, I mean, that's what it was. Like, you went to school, you got a good job, and that's it. But now... It was our parents' society trying to set us up to have stability. Exactly. But now the issue becomes that there's so many ways to make money without necessarily going to school. But this is where I feel us millennials are struggling, right? I, you know, I am a little thankful I have somewhat of an idea. But even me, who 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 is kind of clear and have always been clear of the paths I want to take, um, and I'm very decisive when it comes to that, even me, who I feel secure about, you know, um sort of kind of where I want my life to head. Yeah. I can kind of even feel at times where I'm like, should I be doing this? Is this the right thing? Because you get so many mixed messages. And I think this is why a lot of us millennials are feeling stuck, are feeling um, maybe like in a rat race where we don't know where we stand anymore like what is the right thing to do we have so many different opinions coming from different ways Mm. on the internet you know like all of a sudden like before it was like get yourself a nine to five and make sure your job has good benefits and all these things so that you you can be set for life (laughs) right (laughs) right because all of a sudden this avenue now of entrepreneurship and being an influencer and being, you know, like a product reviewer, being a YouTuber, like these jobs weren't a thing yeah. when we were on our way to college. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, too, that some people, I feel like people look at that lifestyle like, oh, my God, like the influencers <laughs> streaming or like reviewing products and trying to get brand deals. And on the Internet, it looks amazing. Like, damn, that is the dream job. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we live it. Sorta, and we know that how hard it is. It's mm-hmm. not. It's it's not for everybody. For sure. You, you even people who think they want it, they end up getting in. They're like, wait a minute, this shit is not what I thought. For sure, I think it's ten times more work mm-hmm. than having a nine to five. For sure. If you have a nine to five, you clock in at nine. You know what you have to do for the day. You get trained. You are set. You know that when you, at the end of that week, you've worked a couple Mm -hmm. of hours and all those hours you're going to be paid for. When you're an influencer, when you're an an entrepreneur, you're hustling for your money every day. I mean, just when you're an influencer, there's perks to being an Mm -hmm. influencer. 
but it's not co- all. It's not all that it seems to yeah. be. Like for example, for people who don't even know, like what goes into, let's say, a brand deal, right? So a brand deal, it seems like, oh look, this this influencer got a product and they review it, and that's it. It's all it's all fun and games. It's easy. They got so much money yeah. to just talk about it, right? A lot of times, a lot of brand deals are not paid. Some some of, some of the times when the ad deal is paid, which there's, that, there's which a lot of back and forth with you, the influencer, and the brand, mm-hmm. or maybe the talent agency, or there's a ne- the, the negotiation the going social on. Social media manager, um, and it's back and forth for a, a long time, and that's not even to count how you got the brand deal. If they reached out to you, or you was like endlessly s- sending emails back and forth to hey do you want to work hey we could do this we could do that and what's your budget and oh we can't meet that budget but we want you to b- give us this some brands want to like turn your whole instagram into like their own social media fee and be like hey here's 50 dollars. no it doesn't there's work that way there's so much knowledge mm-hmm. or so much um information you have to learn in that world and it isn't that simple and it might seem like the most glamorous job um, and again, it has its perks, like everything in life, you know, and, and things that are worth having most of the time don't come easy, but that type of job isn't for everyone. I think personally, if you're not passionate enough about being on camera, you know, if you never really saw yourself, like for example, me, when I was younger, I aspired to be a model. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to be in commercials. I wanted to, to, to be in magazines. Like I, that was the thing for me. Like it was in my vision board. So I can see how this type of, job, like the entre- being an entrepreneur for me, it's, it's, it's on that route of what I wanted mm-hmm. to be growing up. But there's certain people that maybe you never even thought about being a model. It wasn't really on your radar. You never really thought about yourself doing commercials. You don't like acting. Maybe you don't like dancing. You don't like the entertainment world. Yeah. Like, don't feel that the pressure of society um, and think that now you must be an influencer yeah. to be making it because there's so many things you could do with your life. But but the pressure is definitely there. Yeah. And, so and going even, back to that, to and that not point. not even just the pressure of... Like you working with brands or like your social media making money, the pressure of the people, like in your comments and judging you and like telling you you're not good enough, like that's or criticizing that's, every little thing. Yeah, then. like that's something that you go into a nine to five and you don't have to deal with. Like there's nobody right. saying like, hey, you're not folding this paper correctly. Uh, for like sure. You, if you was to create a video folding a paper, you will get a comment that says. You should have folded that left to right, not right to left. Exactly. Exactly. Like, you need to be ready mm-hmm. for those type of comments. You need to be ready for backlash. You need to be ready for the negativity. Mm-hmm. And some of us, we're not prepared for that. Some of us actually don't even want to deal mm-hmm. with that. Um, and some of us are pre- prepared. And there's still like comments that are like, yo, te pasate. Yeah, it will catch you on that yeah. wrong day. And you read it and you're like, you know what? I'm just Jessica's like, yo, relax. calm down. <laughs> For real, I, I'm not going to say they never get to me, mm-hmm. but it's very hard to get to me. Like, I can read something. You can say, I don't know, whatever. she's ugly, she's yeah. whatever. I, If I don't know you and I feel okay with myself, I could give two craps about what you just said, <laughs> um, which is the way it should be. But we're deviating from the topic. Millennials, we have it. We have it tough. We've gone through some things. I mean, when we graduated, for me, it was 2008 high school, and we were going through recession at that point. Which, which nobody knew who was chilling, playing baseball, <laughs> and the for world is, because, like, burning. For real, because when, I mean, we were just beginning. Yeah. For me, I was just beginning life, so it really didn't hit me. I didn't own anything. I didn't, you know, but fresh out of high school. It's crazy. I still feel like it's crazy. Like, 2008, we was 18. Mm-hmm. Like, that's pretty crazy for us not to remember. Like, that. that's how much... I remember much the talks about it on the news, but it wasn't important to me because I didn't own anything. Yeah. I I was just fresh mm-hmm. out of high school, so to me, I didn't give it importance. Yeah. I never honestly gave importance to anything that was said about um, the stock market. Mm-hmm. For me, back, in, back when I was 18... 
those things weren't important. Those things were for the rich. Yeah. I, I I did I didn't think it was important for me. I, I didn't know what the I didn't think it was, was ever. 18. I didn't think like it was going to be a part of my life like, at any point. I saw numbers and I was like Nasdaq numbers. I'm like, damn, that's a lot of math going on right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think like looking at it, and when people were like freaking out, oh, maybe you know, uh, there there's going to be like layoffs, and maybe the jobs are going to be more difficult to get. That's the only aspect of it that I really thought about. I didn't think about that either. Um. But other than that, I didn't really feel anything because, again, I was fresh out of high school. and I de- No, because I was DJing at that time. And, like, the clubs was not slowing down. So, like, Isn't I was really, crazy? I was really, like. Even when the world is, like, everybody's collapsing out. in a way financially, people are just in For the real. club. It, it's, it's, a min- it's, a, it's an ignorance thing. Yeah. Because if you are ignorant to problems of the world and you don't really want to elevate your life, mm-hmm. you brush it off and you just continue living your life. And even if you face some trouble down the line, ignorance is bliss. Mm-hmm. So the more ignorant you are, you just continue with your life and you making poor choices and you not realizing that maybe you shouldn't be doing that at this time. But again... It really depends on the mindset of the person, where they come from, where we come from. People don't talk about stock markets and they don't talk about financial literacy. Yeah. Like now is that I feel our generation is kind of waking up some. Yeah. Are kind of waking up to financial problems mm-hmm. and, you know, financial literacy and kind of educating. We're, we're educating ourselves as we go. And it's sad because, you know, we had... I don't know for you guys, but for me, when I was younger and I was 18 and I would think about my 30s, I thought at my in my 30s, I was going to be set. For real. I, I, thought, I thought you were going to be retired already out there. I know. I didn't think I was going to be <laughs> retired, but I just thought I was going to be in a different point of my yeah. life. I just didn't think. First of all, I didn't realize how fast years pass by. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm 33, and I still feel like I'm 25. Now, now, you saying that you thought you was going to be at a different point in your life, at, at, in your 30s, right? You're 33. Mm-hmm. You live in a luxe building. You have your own studio. You were married. You, you're not living... Where you grew up, you got out the sure. hood. You have a beautiful family. <laughs> you Are have, you trying to come back have, at me? No, no. You okay. have a, a a beautiful golden I, doodle. And you're here talking and motivating people. You're right. You're right. But I guess what I mean is we, ha- we haven't figured it out yet. We, we are. We haven't. But would you say you're behind? I'm not where I thought I would be. See, at 30, I thought I was going to be, like, Balling. okay financially. <laughs> like, I thought I was going to be traveling carelessly. I thought I would, but, I mean, maybe, again, is ignorance. Because how, how was I supposed to do this when I don't even come from wealth? I, but maybe you, we could live that life if we didn't have everything we have. True. Like, if we was just like, oh, we're just going to work and travel. Like, True. True. I, we could have. I mean, the rent we pay for this, we can go on vacation. But every again, month. it goes back to ignorance is bliss. Because we chose not to stay ignorant, now we can't unlearn. We can't unlearn what we've learned. Mm-hmm. And so for us, once we learn it and we know that that's not the right way to do things, it's hard for us to ignore that the way we were doing things before was the wrong way Mm -hmm. financially and to ignore that maybe, you know, it's not okay to just be throwing away your money and not investing in something that's going to become an asset for you. So for us, it sucks. Sometimes I feel it sucks because sometimes I wish I didn't know so much because it's like this double edge. It's this double edged sword because I remember a time where I didn't worry so much about money but yet again I was doing things wrong Mm -hmm. and I had goals that I wanted to reach that had I kept living my life that way I would have never reached 
it was just always going to be a dream. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to to it's like you feel like you stop your bad habits because you know you can't do that because you need to move in a different direction. So you kind of have to hammer yourself down, you know, and and what makes it even harder sometimes is to be around people who are not on the same page as you are and. And you're trying to take care of your pocket, but the people around you aren't. Mm -hmm. They're spending recklessly, and they don't care that you're trying to not do that. And so that makes it harder because it's like, okay, cool. Like, now everybody else is just living their life carelessly while I have to, like, buckle down for a few years while I do feel the desire to live my life carelessly as well. Mm -hmm. But I know that that would be... That would be irresponsible. I'm in like a different mindset, which is good and bad. Mm-hmm. Which is like, I want to do things, but I also want to put every single dollar I can into the business. <laughs> and I'm also like, shit, I want to own a house because I want my kids to grow up in a house. So now I was like, I have these three different things. Also want to travel. Right, because we, we haven't traveled as a family. Extremely difficult. Extremely difficult, especially with this inflation going on. I realize we don't live we don't live in a bad neighborhood or place at all, but I still crave just having a house. I guess because that was like so ingrained, like, hey, when you get a house, it's like you made it. Like mm-hmm. so now it's like, damn, I need to own a house. But sometimes I'm like, I don't really want a house because all, all the responsibilities that come with a house. Yeah, I kind of feel that way. But then sometimes I'm like, you I want get a house. that itch. You yeah, get that itch. Like, usually in the summer, it's like yeah. I get the itch. Like, but in the winter, I'm like, oh shit, I don't got to shovel snow. I just go into the parking lot. Yeah, and like, yeah. And now summer is like, yo, we would have got a pool and and barbecue. Yeah. yeah. Right, but once the summer's over, I'm like, I'm good. I don't, I don't need the house. But every summer, <laughs> we're like, yo, we don't have a house. Like we're falling behind. We're like, yeah stressing out like what can we do i think that's also a millennial Mm -hmm. struggle because i mean we've gotten through recessions Mm -hmm. we've gotten through inflation um covid things have been pretty crazy Mm -hmm. financially and then our jobs you know most of us who have like regular jobs like um inflation keeps going up but then the pay is staying kind of low it's not for for, yeah and it's hard Mm -hmm. like we grew up millennials. We grew up with this mentality, go to school, go to college, get yourself a good job, get yourself a house, get married, get your kids. It was supposed to not be this difficult. Mm-hmm. But I feel we've been hit with everything, even a pandemic. Like, sure. <laughs> what is going uh, on? Shut down. Two years that basically were like a waste. It for was, a lot, for it, a lot of people, it was, but it was also a, a, a wake up call for a lot of people. It was definitely a wake up call for us. It might not, and it might not have been a waste for a lot of people as well, because a lot of people discovered new things um, that they could do with their time and how to make money, which was a good thing. And realize that you don't need that much to live, because everybody was just like fast, 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 and that shit was just like slow the fuck down. Like, I'm going to teach you what life is. I'm going to show you what life is. I'm going to show you what being with your family is. I'm going to show you what, like, what not seeing your friend for a long time is. So everybody was like, okay. So, yeah, I think it's just been very difficult to do basic things that you're expected to do as an adult, you Mm -hmm. know. It's just been difficult for us. And on top of the fact that, you know, inflation and recession and COVID, pandemic, PC, um, I, we also are being pulled in many directions mentally. And I feel like that is causing a lot of us millennials to just feel exhausted. And, and many of the boomers mm-hmm. may look at us and say, what are these kids so exhausted about? But it's not like physical exhaustion is mental exhaustion. Yeah. Just the constant, you know, comparison online the constant 
Should I be an entrepreneur? Should I work a nine to five? Should I work for myself? Should I work for someone? Should I work have a stable more. job? <laughs> Should I just get my own money? You know, it's like that constant yeah. fight mentally of what is the right thing to do. Well, and also a lot of people were fucked because it was like they was waiting, building, let's say, the people who's getting ready to buy a house when they're 30s. It's like, damn, the houses that were 300K are going for 500 now. And it's right. like not even just 500, it's like 537 offers of like who has the exactly. most cash on hand. Exactly. And then you got Jimmy over here is like, hey, I got $505,000 in cash. And you're just like, I just wanted like a FHA. You know, hey, right. I down. just wanted the, like, I literally wanted the bare minimum. I just yeah. wanted to be a homeowner. It's, and this is where, you know, the advantages of generation mm-hmm. comes in, which again, who am I to blame them mm-hmm. for having more cash? Yeah, who I mean, am I to blame they, them yeah, they got ready, for clearly. having generational wealth? You know, certain people are ahead of the game because they come from families that mm-hmm. are much wealthier than we are. and Or had the information early on and prepared. Right, and, you know, I don't like to uh, sound like a hater because, you know, they got more money than I do. Because if I were them and, they're, and my family placed me in a better position for life. Like, who am I to, yeah. to, to say that they don't deserve that? Mm-hmm. I don't know where they money, their money came from. But it definitely sucks because we some of us are at, at a real disadvantage when it comes to that. For example, us, and a huge disadvantage. Yeah. We don't come from anything. Our parents, we're learning everything as yeah. we go. Everything is new for us. We don't have guidance. We are looking for it. And everything is like a search game. So it takes longer. Yeah. It takes longer to achieve anything, especially under the circumstances that we've been going through. And it's not like, you could definitely, people out there, like we could find a house. Not just we, like anybody could find a house. Mm-hmm. Especially if you have a realtor like Royal the Realtor, you know, and he's <laughs> located and you're trying to move to Connecticut. You know, you can always give him a call. He'll, <laughs> he'll help you out. Uh, shameless <laughs> plug. No, but... You know, like you, you can find a house, right? But it's not as easy as it was before. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's not just like, oh, this is the house I want. I'm, I'm probably gonna get it. Now it's like this is the one I want, but I'm probably gonna end up with like the fourth one. Right. Let's see if I can fight it. for it. Let's yeah. see if I have enough cash yeah. for you know this house to compete with the other yeah. buyers. Like maybe you can't settle for three like you want it. You gotta settle for two. two and two then again, room. I feel like again. Social media, the pressure, Fulana bought a house, Fulano bought a house, so and so bought a house. Congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. But we also need to try and focus on ourselves. Mm-hmm. We need to ground ourselves and say, okay, where am I? Can I afford to buy a mm-hmm. house right now? Would a house right now be a burden to me mm-hmm. or would it be a gift? Yeah. Would it be a blessing? Or would it be something that will stress me the hell out and will put me behind on so many things? Yeah. Will make me pile up bills. Sometimes a house can be a curse yeah. if you're not ready for it. I mean. And again, depending on your your goals, what is it that you want to do? I mean, for us, I, we know that we've been wanting to own a business yeah. for a while. So sometimes, you know, when we were looking for a house before moving into this apartment we're in, I'm sometimes I'm kind of glad maybe we didn't yeah. get into a house when we wanted to because if we did that, I don't know if we would have been able to do this. Definitely not. And for us, given the space we want to get into, this is smart for us. Yeah. So an asset or, you know, or... You building up what it is that's going to take you where you want to go doesn't necessarily have to look the same for everyone. Yeah. That's my point. There's people who they don't aspire to ever have a business. They don't. That's not their thing. Buying a house for you might be an excellent idea. You just want to have something that's going to help you generate generational wealth. And we was going to buy a house. And I remember because it was like, oh, we should get a house with like a big enough basement. So we could put the podcast and we could have like shooting space for whatever we're going to do. And maybe we'll just run the business like that. 
And then we was like, wait a minute, we don't want like people, you know, we wanted to bring on guests and regardless, like all the guests we bring on, we, we analyze like who we're bringing on. But we was like, we we don't want to always bring just random people to our house. And we was just like, let's just get a space. That's when we got the the last, the last studio. And honestly, that would have been limiting ourselves for our vision. Mm Mm-hmm. Because no matter what house we would have gotten, it couldn't have been, we couldn't have scaled it in the basement the way we want to scale things. Well, it would have not generated income. I mean, eventually when, if the podcast kept going, but it would have not been something that could have generated income like this does. Yeah. So, um, yeah, millennials, I'm, we're with you. We're with you. We know it's difficult. We are here. Um, what should you be doing? Sometimes I feel like you need to unplug yourself and stop listening to so many voices because mm-hmm. I feel like that makes it so much harder when you're listening to so many different advice from different people with different goals, with different visions, with different circumstances. Everyone isn't cut out to you. Yeah. Every person's advice isn't for you. So I feel like it's so important to just sometimes unplug yourself, stop scrolling, stop listening to these people, and really center yourself in, in knowing what it is that you want for your life. And, and one thing is that, like in our case, like I feel like 90% of our friends own a house, if not like 95, mm-hmm. literally. Yeah. And like we're the only ones that don't own a house. And it's funny because sometimes we feel behind, but we're also so much clearer on like what we actually want when we buy a house. Because a lot of times that we wanted to buy a house, we was kind of like, are we going to move to Texas? Are we going to move to Miami? Are we going to move to Florida? Like, we're not we're, even clear on yeah, that. Yeah. Like, do we want to fix her upper? Do we want like a whole bunch of acres? Do we want to be secluded? And I was like, yo, we kind of know what we want. So we, we know like where we need to be at with money and how ready we need to be. And, and we're going to know like, okay, we're ready. Like we can, we can yeah. look for a house. So in that case, it's like, cool. Cause we didn't rush into anything. Um, yeah. I guess we, we spent money on renting, but I mean, I don't, it is what it is. I, I don't, yeah. I don't regret like living. where I I'm feel living. like we put our money, I guess the investment money in different ways. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of, Where, all of our down payment is, is in here. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, it, like it's a different route. Yeah. It's still an investment. Mm-hmm. Like a house is an investment. Mm-hmm. So, again, I, I feel that's something that I'm very proud of. Even though, like, we, at times we may feel like, hmm, should we be buying a house? We then center ourselves and we kind of think logically, like, yeah. No, that's not that's not what we want to do now. Like it's not the right time for us. Yeah. Like I, I'm very proud that I haven't felt pressured to do it because someone else is doing it. Yeah. We're very clear on what we've been wanting, like what we've been talking about for years now. Yeah. And so I think that's why I say it's very important to be clear on what your goals are. Like what is it that you want to do? Where do you want to head? What's easier for you? Like the path of so and so doesn't have to be your path, yeah. and just because you're d- taking a different path doesn't mean you're wrong. Mm-hmm. Like everybody has a different journey, and everybody, you know, there's we could have the same goal and different paths. Yeah, it's I mean, totally there's, fine. There's like millionaires and billionaires that say they don't invest in real estate, and then there's millionaires and billionaires that say that they don't invest in the stock market. Yeah, because so like sometimes you get pitched so much, like, hey, real estate is the way. Hey, stock market is the way. Hey, like running hedge funds is the way. It's like there's so many different ways. So right. it's like you and, gotta follow. And the none one of that them are wrong. Exactly. It's, that's the point. None of them are wrong. They're just different mm-hmm. paths to the same thing. They're all looking for financial um, freedom or wealth, and they're all acquiring it yeah. in different ways. So it's very important, very important to understand that just because you're doing things differently than my husband and I. Just because you're doing things differently than, I don't know, Fulano de Tal, who makes a billion dollars, you know, a year, does not mean that you're doing it the wrong way. And we also need to give ourselves grace. We've been through so much as millennials. Give yourself a break. Mm -hmm. By that, I don't mean be careless and be irresponsible. But 
just acknowledge that we haven't had it easy and yeah. you're not you're not delusional for thinking for sometimes feeling so overwhelmed because yeah. i feel like we have such a unique set of experiences yeah. from different generations the internet the Instagram, the Facebook, the entrepreneurs, the information period. Information, it, it's like overload, mm -hmm. an overload of it's like information. You, first, you didn't have information. Now, now you, you have, have too much. much, and it's a problem. Mm -hmm. if and, you, al and also, just keep in mind, like, like bro, we're we're young. I know. Like, I have to remind myself of that because. Yeah, you do. Because sometimes I be like, bro, like we're like. I mean, when we started the podcast, that's why I was like, like we're you're, you're thirty three. And you lost two years to to the the P. It's like, well, what do you actually want? I know, but you know. I mean, I get it. Maybe I, older I, folks will look at me and say, like, "Oh my God, yeah, like she's so young. What is she complaining about?" But I, again, it's that that vision that I had ingrained it's like the fear growing of missing up. Out. You know that this is not. You know that maybe I'm not living my life enough, and just. Sometimes thinking about, you know, like, life isn't guaranteed. Like, who says I'm going to be here tomorrow? Yeah. But then again, I'm like, I can't be irresponsible. You yeah. know, I can't be fine. It's that struggle. I think we need to, I think the fix for us is, like, to figure out a way to, like, add travel. I think if we add travel, we will be more at ease. At least, Instead like, of being you know, so intense, because yeah. I feel like we're very intense. Yeah. <laughs> And, we're um, very intense. I mean, it's not even intense. We're intentional. Intense with, with our goals. Yeah. Which, you know, it's like we feel like we don't do enough. Definitely don't do enough. <laughs> and then we have other people who tell us, like, what do you do mean so you don't do enough? I see you everywhere. You know, you guys are doing, like, so good. You are on YouTube. You guys, I see you on TikTok. I see you on Instagram. And I'm like... Yeah, but we're still not doing enough. I mean, we we spoke about that this a few days ago, that it was like when I quit my nine to five, it was like, oh, you guys are going to see like hella content. <laughs> and it's like, you guys are still seeing one podcast a week and probably less shorts because when I was working, we was doing more shorts because I was just paying an editor. And now I'm like, I can't pay an editor right now. But the, the thing is, but what we came down to and I told her was like, I quit my nine to five, but we built a freaking studio. Like, this is a business yeah. that needs to be ran. Like, when I come here, I'm not just sitting down. Like, there's so many different things that goes into this that my time goes into that. But it goes into that. It might seem like we're not doing much, but it, much, but it's going to something that we are building for ourselves, which is the difference. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, like, we're not seeing the monetary Up front, reward like, right away. Yeah. It's like slowly but surely but short. Which I can see why, you know, for so many people, they might give up quickly because it's a slow, it's a slow progress. But like you said, <laughs> la ignorancia, señore, like the ignorance. Ignorance is bliss. You know, when you get into something, obviously, that you've never done before, you don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You're you learning on the go. And so for us, we're like, oh, my God, you're getting all your hours back. Like, this is going to be super lit. We're going to have yeah, so much Yeah, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to be out. editing Every day. just And like, what you didn't realize is how much this was going mm -hmm. to take from you. Running this. Mm -hmm. And mind you, we're not even like completely up and running completely. Yeah. But just starting this takes a lot of um, physical labor mm -hmm. as well as mental labor because you have to pre you have to think about you know, um, bookkeeping, mm -hmm. and you have to keep think about keeping the studio clean, which right now, you know, we're a startup, so it's like we can't pay someone to do it, so guess who's cleaning this this studio every time somebody is coming in, you know, and then we have to be presentable because you want to yeah. be, you want to have good reviews from new customers. And just like sometimes I walk in and it's like I have a tour schedule because if you want to see the space and you don't want to book it, like, I, I get a tour and, you know, like, hey, an hour passes by and it's like, oh, well, you did today. And I'm like, I didn't do shit. And I'm like, well, you got a potential lead coming in yeah. that might bring you money down the line. Or, like, sometimes one day I walked in and the freaking vanity was on the floor because it ripped off the wall. That was not planned. I was like, all right, guess what? I had a booking in, like, an hour and I had to figure out how to fix the makeup area. 
which it worked out. Everything was fine, but you know, it's just like things that you don't know. It's like owning a business is problem solving. It like is. it's problem solving. And what we didn't anticipate, you know, it's again, social media makes things look very easy sometimes. And what we or you didn't anticipate was the fact that it was going to take so much of your time, mm -hmm. especially now that we're just getting started, yeah. to to get everything situated and like in order yeah. that you weren't going to have enough time to record and edit as much videos as you would like to. Yeah. I mean, I would like to not. Running, <laughs> <laughs> running uh, a business yeah. and... And, and trying to scale it in the way you want to scale mm -hmm. it is not an easy task, folks. Yeah. Cause, and because the thing is, like, I also have to focus on, like, frozen visuals, the business of frozen visuals, which is totally separate. You which know, is just photography. Yeah, a lot of people think it's, like, the same thing. Like, oh, you booked Total Student. No, they're like, this is a different business than frozen visuals. And frozen visuals is what is bringing in the, the money for us to live, which is something that I also have to promote and reach out and talk to clients. And so it's, it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. And then we have social media. <laughs> we have YouTube and then we have the podcast. And then, you know, we're trying to stay up to date mm -hmm. with our personal brands on Instagram. Which, which, which honestly, this is the goal. Like between the studio and social media, the goal is that like our, our social media can maintain like our lifestyle the studio makes us money, uh, profit, profits, and we can reinvest it in the business. And, like, frozen visuals and taking photography clients will be, like, down here. Like, the third one, that will just be, like, on the side, certain projects. But, like we mentioned in the beginning, everybody wants to be a social media influencer until they realize how, how much work it takes. Like, it's not easy. Like Everybody wants to, hey, I, I would love to do a podcast and sit there. Hey, would you love to set up three cameras, two lights, all the mics, is the mics good? Is the audio good? Then I got to edit for two to three hours. and The set, who's planning out the set? Are you doing it yourself? Like, we had to think about this ourselves because we don't have the money to pay someone to make a set mm -hmm. nice for us. So when you're starting out, everything is much more difficult. I'm sure, you know, because of the people that um, we get guidance from and we follow, that, you know, as time goes by, you start obviously making, generating yeah. more profits, God willing, and that will be able to help you so that you can kind of um, have different people yeah. helping you with different things. And that, obviously, I know is going to be so helpful. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait. For I cannot Imagine wait. Imagine, like, yo, here's the memory cards <laughs> to the podcast. I cannot wait. Let I me cannot, know when Like, it's done. the goal is to have a team, you know, that. That while they're fulfilling their dreams, we're also fulfilling ours. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait for that to happen. But again, like in order for us to get there, we have to go through this. Which is the and this. This is the my the friends. Hard part. This is where the majority of people quit because this it's like, is not a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you right now, I've had I, I've had my fair share of breakdowns. Jessica wasn't ready. <laughs> Jessica wasn't as ready as she thought she was. Listen. I don't know. I don't know how to put it. It's it's not a walk in the park. I'm there. There, like I have my moments where I'm like so grateful, mm -hmm. like oh my god, like it's so cool, like everything we're going. But you know, I go through my things. I'm a woman. I go through my times of the month where I'm like more anxious and whatever. And then certain things go wrong during those times, and it's like at that time I feel like I can't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm trying to talk to Babe, and I'm like, um. Maybe it's not. Maybe I shouldn't be talking to you about business. <laughs> I'm like, I can't handle it. it. I, listen, I give it to you. I honestly, my hat's off to you. Yes, yes, because. Again, you guys know we don't come from wealth and we don't have an unlimited, unlimited. um Savings. And unlimited savings and funding for, you know, just making passive little money. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes I've learned that most business people, when they start, you know, when, as we talk to more and more business owners, everyone is on the same boat. And figure it out. you might think that they have it all figured out. 
and they're just trying to figure it out. And they're just rolling with the punches and it's a risk. Mm -hmm. And we knew big businesses too. We knew that having our own business and quitting your nine to five was a big risk. We knew that. But one thing is for you to know something. And another thing is for you to go through it and experience the ups and downs and experience you having to step back on the things you're so used to doing because now you don't have that luxury. Do you think it's even more difficult because I'm so firm on my goals that I don't, I try not to deviate regardless of how hard the situation is. It's more difficult for me, you say? Yeah. Um, yes, I guess. But I'm, I'm, I'm also kind of glad you're like that because if you were like me, (laughs) you know, I think we would be in trouble. I I can admit that. You'd be all over the, I can admit, you, you have to admit, you know, when you have to work on things, like if, what I'm do you a, feel like you need I'm to work on? I'm a little bit more. I'm a little bit more weak in that sense. I have to say, like I have to woman up. I I will gladly you didn't, admit that. But you didn't think it was that way. Like this no. has made you realize that. Yes. It has opened your eyes for a lot of things. Yes. Like when you think you're strong. Yeah. Try something like this and and see if you're strong. Like you know, you have to resist the urges of doing things that you would do without even thinking yeah. about before carelessly. Yeah. I must say that because now you have to be financially responsible because you, yeah, I, I must say that obviously my, obviously I have not fears of failing. Like, you know, sometimes like, damn, like, you know, I have a family, mm-hmm. but I think most of the time I'm more mad that I can't scale faster. Yeah. That I'm so, like, limited and I'm like, fuck, like, because my ideas actually got bigger. (laughs) Which is insane. We were having this conversation the other day on the couch. I know we kind of, like, all over the place right now, but, you know, this is actually what's been going on. Yeah, this is life. Um, We were talking about this the other day on the couch, and he's, like, talking about, you know, like, these big ideas. And I'm just looking at him like, bro, are you okay? (laughs) You sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Like, can we first get through this? Like, I feel like we haven't passed this test. Mm-hmm. But in a way, I'm glad that you're so optimistic still. It, it, gives, me, it gives me hope. And I feel like this is the perfect balance. Yeah. Because, again, if you were like me and, and you know, at, at the points where it's starting to feel like, damn, like, did we make the right decision? Like, am, are we doing the right thing? And doubt starts creeping yeah. in. Yeah. I get incredibly negative. And if you were like me, we would be in trouble. Yeah. And then I see why a lot of people give up. Because it's honestly more of a mental game. It's more of a, a mental strength game. Yeah. Can you resist? Can you take on the pressure? Are you going to take on the pressure well or are you going to fold on the pressure? It's really it really comes down to that. Like are you going to let fear take over? Yeah. Or are you going to weather out the storm? Like what are you going to do? Are you going to adjust to the circumstances or are you going to give up? It's very easy to give up when you find yourself in a place where doubt is trying to take yeah. over. And I I mean I get it. Like I get it on on both ways. Like I I could get how how you would feel that way because I I'm doing the opposite. So like I know already what you feel because I would think about that, but I'm like, okay, that's 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 like out of the question to worry about that because I mean you have a plan. It's not like we just walked in here and said True. thing and and my problems are not that. Like, my problems are that I can't scale. It's not that it's, it doesn't Fast work. Fast enough. Yeah, like, it, it's not that it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Like, it, I know it works because, I mean, I'm not profitable, but I know it works, right? It's not profitable because not enough people know about it. 
Um, hasn't been enough but time. the idea the concept works yeah the idea works yeah you're you're confident in that your business plan is mm. a good one and i agree and my my issue is that some people ask me for things that i this podcast setup is the most requested item in this studio which is not available for rent i know unfortunately for for certain reasons like my internal sweat right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you looking shiny, by the way. Oh damn. Um, no, but no, it's just it's just not. We it wasn't it wasn't the main plans, but whatever. Everybody who sees the set, like yo, what's up? I need you rented. Mm-hmm. Ideally, me. We would yes, love to. We would. We in the original sketch, we had a podcast room. Thank God we didn't do it because that would have been a fail. Yeah. Um, but we adjusted. So that's like my problem. It's not necessarily, and you know, just like trying to keep you at ease because I know how you get, and it's understandable because you know every two weeks you were seeing a, a fat check going in, and I was like, and I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll say it. I'm, <laughs> I, I mean, me gusta la comodidad. Yeah. I'm very, I'm a very comfortable person. Like I, I mean, no me gusta pasar trabajo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, I like to have an easy life like everybody does. And, you know, when you are not seeing that consistency of money coming in, you, you all of a mm-hmm. sudden have to think twice about being so comfortable. And you have to get out of your comfort zone and not do the things that you absolutely love, like getting Starbucks. <laughs> and, you know, like all of a sudden it's like the little things <clears throat> that for me bring me joy. It's like, it's now, is it a necessity or is it a want? And then for me, it's like, damn, man up, go get more money. But it's also like, do you man up, go get money anywhere, and lose like your vision, the vision of the plan because you was desperate and didn't want to wait it out? Because business is that like you can't expect to go into business and like a month in, two months in, a year in, and be like, yo, I made it. I mean, I guess cer- certain businesses but you know there's gonna be challenges new things that you don't know things are that just gonna pop up and some businesses are three years in and still trying to figure out how to do their taxes so it's yeah. like you know there's so much things but because there's so many little aspects like i get it now i mm-hmm. i completely get it and it, and when you're one person like i still work my regular job he's the one that's doing this full-time but even then He's doing this full time. It's still a lot for one person. And yeah. mind you, we came into this and we have a business partner, which is Brian, which we're so thankful for. And we were saying the other day, like, thank God we met him and that, you know, they got along together and they were, you know, had similar visions, you know. And that they came together on this journey mm-hmm. because I can't imagine how lonely it would have been for you doing this yeah. by yourself. And then he faces the same issues. Like, you know, he's a partner here in the studio, but he also has his own business and mm-hmm. businesses that he want to start. And it's like, and how, also and how many in the same boat. Needs, yeah, how many things he wants to, to get straightened up. Um, which but is he's the just problem, one person. Which is the problem that we face. Is like, we can't, we need to scale. Right. Like, scaling meaning hiring somebody to manage freaking emails or hire, hiring an editor or hiring... We could go on and on. But how do you scale if you don't first go through this? This is the part you that's hard that you have to go through in order to be able to scale. And this is the part where a lot of people give up. And you so, can't deviate because if you deviate, then you mess up your chances of trying to scale. Because if I end up, let's say I'm a photographer and I'm like, hey, I do headshots, right? And then I'm like, oh, headshots are slow. I'm going to start doing weddings. But my dream is to like have the ultimate headshot company a company yeah. is like okay oh but this wedding money is good and right. then it's like you come back when you got money you're like oh shit like i haven't my dms are dry because I, i've never i haven't worked on this my in so headshot long. business is not really growing because now my focus is on weddings because that's where the money is it's true it's and that true the problem is you start chasing money and when you start chasing money and not your vision and the passion like everything just falls. dwindles and just goes to shit <laughs> But this was an amazing podcast. I actually enjoyed this one. Yes. I actually talked this one. So, millennials, millennials, millennials. We got this. Um, 
we've had it pretty complicated. You're not crazy. We hear different advices every day. I really have filtered what I watch, who I'm scrolling through because of that reason. Um, sometimes I just rather not even scroll because I don't want to start grabbing, grabbing other people's ideas of what life should be. And as strong as you may be, if you are constantly listening to other people talk about their dreams and the way they're doing it and how you should be living yours, as strong as you may be, you're going to start feeling like you're having an identity crisis and you don't know what you should be doing because you're not focusing on you and your dreams. You're not focusing on what works for you. You, What works for you might not be being your own boss. Yeah. What might work for you is being maybe a stay-at-home mom who, you know, loves her husband or her husband goes and gets the money and, you know, you live a happy family, a happy life with your family as a mom in your house. So don't limit yourself or don't feel unhappy because your life doesn't look like an influencer's life mm -hmm. on Instagram or a famous person. Some of these people might have the most glamorous life online and they're miserable. Yeah. And don't be scared of pivot too. Like, you, for example, you realize like, yo, maybe this life is not what I want. And it, it, it's okay. For sure. Like, I've, you, you I've have to questioned go. that myself many times. I, at the end of the day, I know I want peace. I want peace. I don't want problems. I want peace. I want to be able to live a peaceful life. If I start, you know, chasing, let's say, being an influencer, for example, and I see that it's robbing me of my peace, I'm going to find a different way to make money. Yeah. Because nothing in this world is important enough to rob you of your peace. Agreed. And there's way too many ways in life to make money for you to not look for a better way. So there's not one size fits all. It's not one answer to everything. There's not a right or wrong answer. It's what's right for you. Agreed. And all I want is for her to have peace and to build the best freaking studio in Westchester, whether it be this one or the, I don't ask you. <laughs> you know, I've, I've changed my mind also about, you know, like being an influencer. I, I, I have changed my ways of thinking and how I want to approach a lot of these things because of that reason. Um, I want to have way much more control over my life. I don't want to be controlled by brands. I would love to work with brands, but I also know that there's certain places that you can place yourself in life where you can have more leverage mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily be um, the, I don't know how you say the the the, the caricature or the mannequin of yeah. a brand. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be your own person and have leverage through other businesses and other revenue streams of revenue and not just depend on brand deals. You know, sometimes I feel like influencers just depend on brand deals, yeah. and that's why they have to be what they want them to be, and this is where people get lost into who they are. So I've changed my mind regarding that subject and how, you know, maybe I don't have to be in front of the camera all the time. Maybe I don't have to be that person. Maybe I can do something that's more behind the scenes. Let's see where life takes me. I'm ready for it. Got three cameras ready to roll. <laughs> but yeah oh you gotta do the outro so yeah guy that's all for today <laughs> all right that's it for today's video <laughs> you guys for today's podcast you guys thank you so much for listening if you're listening on our audio platforms don't forget to leave us your reviews it really helps us out if you're here on youtube don't forget to give us a like if you've got, gotten to the end of the video and you enjoyed this conversation leave us your comments down below are you a millennial how do you feel about this sure. um what challenges have you faced? Um, what has made life better for you, maybe? Um, and help us out a little bit. Um, don't forget to hit the bell so you can be notified every time we post a video. And until next time. Peace.